Good day to the viewing and the listening public. I am Godfrey Brooms and this is the COVID-19 update for Friday, April 23. As usual on this program is the Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony. Minister Anthony, it's always a pleasure having you update the nation. Minister, starting today's COVID-19 update, um, as of yesterday, what is the total number of persons that would have received the first dose of the vaccine and how many persons are fully immunized? So we are getting increasing numbers every day. As of yesterday, uh, we now have 111,825 persons who have received their first dose of vaccines. And um, those who would have been fully immunized, we now have uh, 1,771 persons. So I think uh, the vaccination campaign is going well. We want to increase these numbers. And we have been working with a number of partners uh, in the community, community leaders and so forth, to try to increase our numbers. Uh, as you know, we do have enough vaccines in the country, and we want to get those in people's arms as quickly as possible. It doesn't make sense that you have the vaccines and you have them in storage. The only way that vaccines would help people is if you get it in people's arms, and that's what we're trying to do. So any organization, business, NGO, faith base, um, who want to partner with us, please reach out to us so that we can work with you to get uh, the vaccines uh, into people's arms. Minister, you rightfully said that we have uh, a lot of the vaccines here, but in relation to the geography of Guyana and the, topogra the um, topography of the hinterland, are every adult in the country, do they have access to the vaccines? They, they have access because um, in regions 1, 7, 8, and 9, uh, we have special programs where our health teams are going into every village and those who want to have the vaccines, uh, we are able to give them the vaccine. So we have intensified our outreach work in these regions. Uh, region 9 is one of the leading regions in terms of how many vaccines they have been uh, giving out. And they have sev several teams in different sub-districts sub of Region 9 that are working simultaneously. Similarly in Region 1. Uh, in Region 8 and 7, um, they're posing some peculiar challenges because with Region 8, the mountains and so forth have been very challenging for the health team. Nevertheless, uh, teams have been going out and reaching out to uh, villages. One of the challenges that uh, some of our teams have encountered is hesitancy in a few of the villages, but we are working um, on that. We are trying to talk to the church leaders, we are trying to talk to the community leaders, and hopefully we'll be able to persuade them so that the rest of the community uh, would come on board and take the vaccines. Minister, after someone would have been administered the COVID vaccine, are they allowed to give blood? Yes, there's no contraindication that you cannot give blood. Um, our advisory is that after, after you have been vaccinated, if you want to give blood with, uh, after 24 hours, that's okay. There's no contraindication. Minister, there is a lot of, um, there are a lot of myths about the COVID-19 vaccines and persons are unsure if they should take it. Um, one of such is that the vaccine is made up of other bad diseases. Could you speak to this, Minister? Well, the origin of the, this virus is still um, being investigated. As you know, the WHO has recently um, sent a, a team to Wuhan uh, China to investigate the origins of the COVID-19 disease. A report was published, but it's still not conclusive as to the origin of the disease. One of the theories uh, that has been around is that the virus itself is one of those coronaviruses that affect bats, and that you had a leap from bats to human beings. And because we, we haven't seen such a virus 
amongst, amongst humans, that is why it has spread so rapidly. We are vulnerable to that type of virus. So um, that's one of the theories, but this jump from bat to human, that has not been proven with any uh, certainty. So the, this myth that is going around that somehow, um, you know, we are going to get diseases from bat if we, if we take the, uh, the vaccine, that's not true because the vac vaccines are designed to stimulate your immune system uh, without giving you any disease. And the vaccines that have been developed globally are designed in such a way. So they help to stimulate your immune system so that you can produce antibodies to fight off COVID-19, but they don't give you any disease. And I think people should understand that because that is very important. These vaccines are going to protect you uh, from getting disease. It's going to prevent you from getting into the hospital um, being sick and you have to go to the hospital. It prevents you from dying from COVID-19. So this is more important right now. And uh, I think if you get an opportunity to get the vaccine, um, please take it because it's going to save your life. Mr. A number of persons have been also claiming that the vaccine is Chinese made and it is programmed to kill you in three years. Is there any truth to this? Again, this is another myth. Um, we don't know the origins of the vaccine uh, of the virus. We know that the first cases started in Wuhan, China, and then it spread to the rest of the world. And there is nothing like the vaccine being programmed to kill you. We know the the scientists from around the globe, those in the World Health Organization and other major. Um, labs around the world have been able to study this disease. A lot of the clinicians, doctors, have studied the, the, the disease and really it affects um, different parts of your body and because it, it does that, people can get very sick and people can die. So what we want to do is to prevent disease from happening and we can only do so if we take the measures that we have been recommending, like mask wearing, and also if we take the vaccine, because the vaccine is going to be protective. So there's no, um, no evidence that these, the vaccine is going to kill you in three years. Uh, there's nothing like that. And so we should dispel these myths because they're all nonsense. Minister, can you also speak to pers persons that are of the belief that the vaccine would computerize your body? <laughs> I don't know how the vaccine would computerize your body, but um, I guess we have to take these, um, these rumors seriously because they are still, maybe whether it's a small percentage of people who believe them, and that can prevent those persons from being uh, hesitant in taking the vaccine. There's no evidence whatsoever that, uh, you know, this would computerize your body. Your body is not built that way. Um, we, we are biological entities. We, we have uh, <laughs> these viruses, if they get into our body, like other microorganisms, would infect us and can do harm to us. And what we are trying to do with vaccines is to prevent harm. So, you know, the underlying theme here is that these vaccines, the benefits of these vaccines um, are more important because they would protect you from getting the disease. Minister, tangentially, um, World Malaria Day will be observed on April 25 under the theme Reaching the Zero Malaria Target. Can you give us an overview of the situation in Guyana and provide an oversight on how well we have been how well we have done in lowering transmission of the disease in the hinterland areas? So we have been working on reducing malaria in Guyana for uh, a long time now. And, but what we noticed, while we probably would have had our lowest uh, rates of malaria in 2015, we have noticed a steady increase in cases from 2015 onwards. So there have been 
about a 46% increase in the cases of malaria from 2015 to now. Uh, we, we are working hard to make sure that we can reduce these cases. Most of our cases of malaria is now in Region 9, uh, 7, 8, and 1, and they account for about 94% of our cases. But because you have a lot of people who are going in from the coastland to do mining and so forth, uh, we'll find a lot of coastlanders who, when they go into the interior where malaria is endemic, can um, get the disease. So one of the things that we want to do in terms of rolling back malaria and in keeping with the global team of getting to zero is that we have developed a strategic plan that would go up to 2025. And that's, in that strategic plan, there are a number of programs that we, have, we are going to set up in terms of how we are going to reduce the malaria in Guyana. Some of it would have to do with um, managing the vector, that is the mosquito, uh, making sure that we can reduce the mosquito population. Then you have uh, strategies that would help to prevent people from being bitten by mosquito. And you have strategies, of course, when people get infected uh, with malaria, that we are able to treat them appropriately so that we can prevent them from dying from malaria. So there are a number of strategies, but prevention is the way that we want to, um, we want to focus on. We have started uh, training, and we'll intensify this training for uh, persons in the community who would help us with rolling out of a malaria education program in regions 1, 7, 8, and 9. So we have started training for 120 persons in, in these different regions. Um, from May to maybe June, we would start rolling out uh, bed nets that would have been impregnated with insecticide. These insecticide um, would be on these nets. They can last for as long as three years. So if a mosquito, if you're living in one of these areas where there's a lot of uh, malaria and mosquitoes, and you use these bed nets, when the mosquito lights on the net, um, it will come in contact with the insecticide and die. So that's the strategy that is being used. The ministry, as of uh, next month, would start distributing these nets into the regions that I mentioned. That's one, seven, eight, and nine. And we have 95,000 bed nets that we'll be distributing. We'll also be working with um, mining camps that are in those areas. And we have bed nets and hammocks, because in some communities they use hammocks, uh, not beds. And we have a, a combo that we are giving to people, which would be the hammocks and the nets. Uh, so that, again, if they're working in one of the back dams and they're, they, they need to be protected, that they can use these um, bed nets and hammock uh, to remain protected. So in marking uh, this day where we want to focus on malaria, which is on the 25th of April, we have a number of strategies that we are rolling out to help to reduce uh, the spread of malaria in Guyana. And hopefully as we roll out these strategies and they take hold in the community, we will start seeing a reduction in the cases of malaria. Our overall goal and that of the World Health Organization is by 2030 that the cases of malaria would be substantially reduced. Our plan goes until 2025 but it's in keeping with the general direction of the WHO plan of reducing to zero by 2030. So we're working and uh, we have had a number of international partners that have been collaborating with us. We have projects currently that we are working on in collaboration with Harvard University. We have another project that we are working on with the University of Oxford. And all these entities are helping us to understand the, the dynamics of this disease, transmission methods, types of mosquitoes, habitats, and so forth, 
so that we can use the science to be able to reduce the mosquito population and prevent malaria in Guyana. Thank you, Minister. Um, can someone who is currently on treatment for malaria be administered the COVID-19 vaccine? We prefer that if you are on treatment, that you complete that treatment. And once the treatment is completed, then we'll give you the, um, the vaccine. So it's better you finish your treatment. And all that is because uh, when we give the vaccine, we want to uh, observe for side effects. And we prefer that you're not on any particular treatment before we give that vaccine. Now, that's not to say that persons with chronic diseases must come off their treatment. We're not doing that. Right? If you're diabetic or hypertensive, you continue with your treatment and you can receive your vaccine. In the cases of these infectious diseases like malaria, we'll prefer you to finish your treatment that is ongoing. And once you finish your treatment, then we'll give you the vaccine. This has been the COVID-19 update with the Minister of Health, the Honorable Dr. Frank Anthony. For more information, you can visit our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms. Godfrey Brooms is saying goodbye for now.